The world is fast approaching a tipping point that's going to revolutionize medicine, science, and the pharmaceutical industry. What is it? How do you predict a tipping point? Well, let's reduce it to first principles. And my favorite way of thinking about tipping points was defined by Eddie Cantor, the Broadway star and comedian of the early 20th century, who said, to make an overnight success takes 20 years. So if a tipping point is eminent in what's happening in healthcare today, then what is it that, that's been in progress for 20 years that is going to be an overnight success? Well, in order to think about what that is, we first have to decide what is the problem we're trying to solve. Arguably, healthcare, the problem in healthcare is to prevent disease. Well, what is disease? What is health? Well, to take it again to a first principle, the op opposite of health is death. So what does the scope of death look like in the history of human existence? What's the, what has been the major cause of death for 75,000 years since modern humans came out of the trees and, and evolved sophisticated language? For 75,000 years, Human beings live to be 25 or 30 years old. Think about that. For 75,000 years, humans lived to be 30 years old. What did they die of? They died of infection. Until 100 years ago, 120 years ago, the leading cause of death in Boston, Massachusetts, and every other city and country on the planet was infection. But something happened that changed all that. That was the scientific revolution. The scientific revolution produced a new understanding of infection through the germ theory of disease, through epidemiology and understanding the transmission of disease, through the invention of vaccines, and of course later eventually the invention of antibiotics. The eradication of infection as the principal cause of death to humans added 50 years to lifespan in 100 years. So for 75,000 years, lifespan was 30. Eradication of infection increases lifespan to 80. What's the data that infection is no longer the major threat to human survival? The WHO data. Every year, 60 million people on the planet Earth die, about 160,000 people a day. 40% of them or more, 40 million of them out of the 60 million die of diseases cancer, heart disease and stroke, neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, diabetes, metabolic syndrome. 40 million people out of the 58 million people who die every year on the planet Earth die of those causes. And those causes have in common the fact that at root cause, inflammation is either the cause, is either the cause of those conditions or makes them worse. So the, so the problem to be solved, if we're trying to prolong the, the health and survival of the human race, is inflammation. The COVID pandemic was a intern and still is an, an international disaster on many levels. It killed about 8 million people worldwide, 8 million people over several years. 40 million people a year die of inflammation today. It dwarfs the magnitude of the problem. So what is the tipping point for inflammation? What, what is the breakthrough that's been occurring for 20 years that is positioned to provide a solution for inflammation? It's called bioelectronic medicine. It, it, it started in this building here at the Feinstein Institute. My colleagues and I found that the, the vagus nerve, which is a principal communication conduit from the brain stem to the organs of the body, the vagus nerve has the inherent capacity to control inflammation. And with advances out of Silicon Valley and with advances in molecular biology and neuroscience, it's possible to connect the dots. And today we can build computer chips that control the activity of individual neurons in the vagus nerve to turn off inflammation, first in animals, but now in people. And by turning off inflammation by controlling the signals in the vagus nerve, it's possible to treat diseases as far ranging as rheumatoid arthritis, to inflammatory bowel disease, to improving the therapy of rehabilitation after stroke, 
to potentially one day treating cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and metabolic syndrome. That's the tipping point that is eminent. And I'm not the only one that believes this or is committed a career of work to, to studying it. It's a multiple billion dollar industry already. We have huge investments have been made and are continuing to be made by the National Institutes of Health, by DARPA, and by major strategic pharmaceutical and medical device companies to the tunes of billions of dollars, ranging from GE to Medtronic to Boston Scientific to Google Verily. The tipping point to me is eminent because the scientific basis for this and the mechanic mechanistic understanding is rigorous. It's almost unassailable. The issue that is stopping this from widespread use is adoption. It's cultural change. It's people learning that the possibilities for using a computer chip to replace pills and injections is right around the corner. It's a new way of thinking about health. It's a new way of thinking about disease. It's going to be a new way for physicians to prescribe. It's going to be a new way for the pharmaceutical industry to get its self, its mind, its strategy around commodities that can be placed on a patient under the skin or on the skin, perhaps once for life instead of multiple times a day of taking a pill or weekly or monthly injections, and devices that can be held in, in your hand to treat diabetes and control glucose with ultrasound devices that, that don't have to be injected at all. These things are not future science that I'm imagining. Everything I've told you has already been done. It's a question of crossing the adoption, the cultural change that will represent the tipping point. So what happens after the tipping point? I see it very, very clearly. If we cure inflammation, people won't die. If we, if we attack inflammation at its root cause, we will revolutionize the treatment for not only obvious inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease, but for cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, obesity, neurodegeneration, the major killers of the human species. What happens then? Well, people aren't dying. They're going to live longer. And I think they're going to live 50 more years. I think these revolutionary changes of bioelectronic medicine will add 50 years to healthy human lifespan. Now, before you tell me you don't want to live to be 130, <laughs> think about that for a second. What if you're 130 years old and you don't have any inflammation? You're going to feel like you were 18. You're going to drive your great grandkids to school. You're going to stop and play golf or tennis. You're going to go home and read a book or maybe write one. It's going to change everything. And that's the tipping point that is eminent. I, it's, to me, unstoppable. I don't know if it's tomorrow or next year or the year after, but the trajectory is established. The rocket's launched. You can plot its course. Thank you.